Hey everyone, and welcome back to my channel for another episode of the PTG Rail route learning series for Train Sim World 2 and Train Simulator. Um, so in this episode, we're going to be taking another look at Train Sim World 2, and I'm going to be driving on the Southeastern High Speed Route, which of course I did take a brief look at a couple of weeks ago uh, on the central section of this route in the class 465 in the opposite direction. Uh, so in this episode, I'm going to be driving a full run of the route between Faversham and London St Pancras into National, which is a total journey distance of around 50 miles. Now, I have, of course, covered this journey in the very distant past at the very start of my channel, in fact. So this is as such a remake of one of the first videos I ever made. And it's also um, quite a special episode for me in that it's the first uh, video I've been able to record on a new PC that I've built just this past week. Um, as some of you may remember from my past video recorded in Train Simulator from a couple of weeks ago, um, um, I've been having quite a few problems with my computer and it seems that I may have had a hardware issue that meant that Train Simulator was just completely unreliable and often unplayable. So I decided to just build a whole new machine from the ground up. For anyone who's interested, the specs of the new machine that I'm recording on today, um, the processor is an Intel Core i9-10900K, uh, normally running at 3.7 GHz with a boost clock speed of 4.9 GHz. And I've connected that to a water cooler and turned on AI overclocking on the motherboard so we're getting towards 5.2 to 5.3 gigahertz on the clock speed uh, the ram is corsair vengeance ddr4 ram uh, i've got 16 gigabytes uh, 3600 megahertz and for the graphics card i've got an nvidia um, rtx 3070 which was incredibly difficult to get hold of but has really been powering the graphics on this machine to new heights um, as hopefully you're going to see in this video today, as this video is now recorded in 4K at 60 frames per second. Um, so the journey that I'm driving today is in timetable mode. I've set the weather to summer cloudy, so for anyone who'd like to replicate this, uh, just go to timetable mode and drive train 1 Foxtrot 17, which is the 7.30am service between Faversham and St Pancras International. And the stops on this journey include Sittingbourne, Raynham, Gillingham, Chatham, Rochester, Strood, Gravesend, Ebbsfleet International, Stratford International, and finally London St Pancras International. The train that I'm driving today is of course the Class 395 Javelin High Speed Electric Multiple Unit and the train's actually formed of two Javelin units connected together. Um, each individual unit is six coaches long so with the two combined I'm driving a 12 coach train. Uh, so the Class 395s have been in service since 2009 and were manufactured by Hitachi and built at the Kasado factory in Yamaguchi, Japan. Uh, they were constructed between 2007 and 2009 and entered service on the 29th 9th of June 2009, with a total of 29 of these units produced. Um, they have a maximum speed of 140 miles per hour or 225 kilometers per hour, which we will be able to get up to on this journey today. Um, each unit weighs 265 tons and they have uh, 16 280 traction motors per unit. Um, so the units are actually designed to work on the 750 volts DC third rail electrification system found throughout the southern region of the British Railway Network. But they're also designed to run on the 25 kilovolt 50 hertz AC overhead electrification system, which we will find on the high speed one route uh, once we get to Ebbsfleet International. Um, they also, of course, have the TVM430 signalling system installed into the cab, um, which will allow us to drive on the high-speed route correctly. And I'll teach you a bit more about that as we go on this journey. I've now jumped into the cab of the train just to quickly set us up here ready for departure. So the first thing we need to do if I just look down and to the left is find the master key switch which you can now see just to the left of the combined traction and brake controller. So I'm just going to click there now to put the key in and now just drag it downwards to turn the key into the on position. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is press control and numpad enter to turn on the AWS and TVM430 signaling systems and then shift and numpad enter to turn on the driver safety device and now I'm going to move the reversing handle into the neutral position and reset the AWS self-test sequence. 
We also had the driver safety device which beeped immediately after that as well. Um, so yeah, just to quickly talk about the cab controls here. So um, just at the top of the screen there, you can see there's a light that says DC that's uh, lit up and next to that CTRL, which stands for Channel Tunnel Rail Link. Um, if the DC light is lit up, that means we are currently set up um, for running on the third rail electrification system, which is found here at Faversham. And one thing I've noticed uh, when driving this route in Train Sim World 2 is that when you start at the Faversham end of the route, the train is already set up ready for departure. But when you start at the St Pancras end of the route, you actually have to set it up ready for the Channel Tunnel Rail Link. And uh, you have to set up the pantograph settings yourself. And of course, I'll talk about how to change this when we get to Ebbsfleet and we switch power modes later on in this journey. Um, so the combined traction and brake controller that I mentioned a moment ago just in front of us that has four steps of power that you can see there. Let's we'll move it up to the neutral position. We've now got four steps of power and the braking we've got the minimum setting and then beyond that we've got very precise brake control. So it's not a stepped brake like uh, most traditional uh, British units have and it allows for much more precise controlling of the brake force and hopefully coming to a more controlled stop at these stations. Now if we just continue around the cab here I just wanted to talk a bit about the speedometer in front of us there. So you can see it currently reading uh, zero. It's a fully digital speed readout. And just to the right of that zero, uh, you can see there's a, a minus symbol, a red minus symbol. So that minus symbol currently indicates we're neither accelerating or braking. Um, as we gain speed, then there will be an up arrow there instead of the minus symbol. And when we're losing speed, there will be a down arrow. Um, so those arrows are actually very useful to help you to know what to do with the combined traction and brake controller to maintain speed on particular gradients and so on. Um, immediately to the right of that, you've got the brake uh, pressure gauges. So you can see there currently the white needle pointing at two. Uh, that indicates how hard the brakes are applied. And I just released the brakes slightly. Um, so when that white needle points the zero the brakes are fully released and right next to that we have um, this sort of uh, brake percentage controller so you can see there um, there's a red um, marker that goes from around 75 to 80 percent and upwards uh, generally when you're applying the brakes uh, on a journey I try not to go above about 70 um, on that uh, particular gauge and that, that hopefully means that we shouldn't be braking too hard uh, when stopping at stations and now I'm going to press the H key twice to turn on the headlights to the uh, correct daytime running setting and now that we've done that just to mention the horn there is a two-tone horn controllable with the space bar and the B key now in the class 395 there are no windows to open so I won't be opening any windows on this journey today and now I think we're pretty much set up ready for departure so let's just take another look outside the train and then start on our journey up towards London away from Faversham the speed limit here is initially 60 miles per hour with around seven miles to go to our first stop at Sittingbourne and in a moment the speed limit is going to increase further to 75 miles per hour um, we won't be able to reach the current 60 speed limit before the rear of the train has passed that speed board so it's not really something that we need to worry about too much for now and then shortly after passing this speed board we're going to be on an upward gradient which is going to affect our acceleration So I have to say, with this new PC build, uh, playing Train Sim World 2 in 4K at 60 frames a second is beyond anything that I imagined from this, and I'm really impressed with the quality. I have to say, Train Sim World looks quite stunning at times uh, with these graphics settings. Um, I don't know if you're going to see a huge improvement in graphical quality if you've only got a 1080p HD display, um, but certainly I'm hoping the videos will be a lot smoother than anything I've put out before. Um, of course, within Train Simulator, uh, frame rates are not quite as smooth as this, just due to how old it is and how it's totally unoptimized for modern hardware. 
And so with Train Simulator, I'm looking more to be recording in 1440p than 4K. Um, but with Train Sim World 2, I'm hoping to record all future videos now in 4K at 60 frames a second if possible. Uh, certainly, please do let me know in the comments uh, what you think about the graphical quality um, in this video. Now as we get towards 75 miles per hour, I'm going to cut off the power just before we reach it, so when we're doing around 72 or 73, just because we're about to start on a downward gradient, and then shortly after that the speed limit will be going up further to 85 miles per hour, and then shortly after that up to 90. So I've just cut the power back now just to ensure that we don't end up uh, breaking the speed limit here. As you can see there is still an up hour, uh, sorry, up hour, <laughs> up arrow on the speedometer indicating that we are still accelerating. And uh, we're now passing the 85 mile per hour speed post. Speed post. Um, seems I'm a bit tongue tied this morning for some reason. And uh, we've got around 4.7 miles to go at that speed post. Um, the next speed change is uh, in, an increase in the speed limit to 90 miles per hour, and at that point we've got around 3.7 miles to go. the power back slightly to ensure that we don't accelerate above 85 miles per hour and we're now passing the 90 mile per hour speed post, speed post. that's the second time I've said boast instead of post and so we can now accelerate up towards that. Uh, we're now coming up on Tenham station with around 3.2 miles to go. After passing through Tenham Station, I'm now looking out for the next signal, the following signal after the one at the end of the platform, which you can see coming up just ahead. I'm now cutting the power back to ensure that we don't break the 90 mile per hour speed limit. And from this point, I'm just going to allow the train to coast as uh, just past the next signal after this one, the speed limit is dropping to 85 miles per hour just for a short distance. And we're now on an upward gradient, which should just bring our, our speed off nicely. Coming up on the 85 mile per hour speed post and we're now uh, still on the upward gradient so I'll now give us some power just to ensure we don't lose too much speed and uh, just by the next signal uh, or just past it I think is where the speed limit goes back up to 90. And I'm now looking out for the landmarks for our stops so the uh, main landmark now is the next overbridge that we pass under and uh, just past that there's going to be a right hand curve so between that overbridge and the right hand curve is where I'm going to apply the brakes for sitting wall. You can now see the overbridge I mentioned coming up just ahead. I'm now cutting the power back just to ensure that um, we can start losing our speed in time and now I'm going to apply the brakes. Now I'm going up to 70% on the brake gauge which should be about right. Of course, being a 12-car train, we do need to stop right at the end of the platform as we have to on pretty much, uh, well, at pretty much every stop on this journey. And you can now see the platforms coming up just ahead. Speed's coming up, coming off quite nicely here. I don't really want to enter the platform any faster than about 30 to 35 miles per hour if possible. Um, I'm actually reducing the braking now as we're probably slowing down a little bit too quickly. Uh, here at Sittingbourne you need to stop at the 10 to 12 car stop sign near the end. just momentarily release the brakes as I felt we were probably going to stop a bit too quick there. We're now 
bypassing the 4 to 8 car stop sign so you can now see the 10 to 12 coming up just ahead. And we should now be stopping in just about the right place. Starting away from Sittingbourne, the speed limit here is still 90 miles per hour with around 1.7 miles to go to an upcoming 70 speed limit and around 5.7 miles to go to the next stop which is Raynham. junction coming up just ahead uh, for trains turning to the right that's the branch towards uh, Sheerness and the Isle of Sheppey. And now we've got the line from Sheerness and the Isle of Sheppey joining us here. quite a steep upward gradient here so we're actually not going to be able to reach 70 miles per hour before the speed limit drops to 70 and then once we're at 70 I need to use mid to high power to try and maintain the speed due to that upward gradient. speed limit's now dropped to 70 miles per hour. We're still on the upward gradient, though that gradient is going to change to a downward gradient shortly. Um, so I'm just going to keep an eye on the um, speedometer arrow just to see what the train's actually doing. the power back as the hour, as the arrow is indicating uh, that we're now on this downward gradient. Uh, coming up shortly uh, we're going to be passing through uh, Newington station. At Newington uh, we're actually going to be four track for a couple of miles until just before Raynham. Just applied some brakes there as we reached 70 and I wanted to ensure that we didn't break the speed limit. So we just passed Newington Station with around 2.7 miles to go and we've started on an up 0.5% grade. And also at the signal, um, just as we passed through the station, the speed limit went up to 75 miles per hour. So 
I'll just cut the power back there a bit just to ensure that we didn't break the speed limit. So what I'm looking out for now is where the four tracks join back to two and at that point I'm then going to apply the brakes for Raynham Station. Four tracks are now joining back to two at this point, so now I'm just about to prepare to brake. I'm going to brake just before this point ahead. I'll go up to 70 on the brake gauge and adjust as we get closer if necessary. As you can see here, the speed limit's going up to 90 miles per hour. It also went up to 80 just as the tracks joined back to two as well. Um, though, of course, there's no way we could accelerate to that due to having to stop here at Raynham Station. Um, we're probably stopping a bit too early, so I'm just reducing the braking again momentarily. And here at Raynham, I need to stop at the 12 car stop sign right near the end of the platform. You can now see the 12 car stop sign is just coming up on the left hand side so I'm just going to try and bring us to a stop next to that now and we should now be stopping in just about the right place. Departing away from Raynham, the speed limit here is 90 miles per hour, with 2.9 miles to go to the next stop at Gillingham, and around 2 miles to go to an upcoming 60 mile per hour speed limit. I'm looking out for along here now is the warning for the upcoming 60 mile per hour speed limit which is 0.8 miles from the limit itself and as we reach that warning then at that point I'm just going to shut off the power and allow the train to coast for now. We've just reached the 60 warning. We've now shut off the power to allow the train to coast at this point. And so we've just passed the first signal after the warning. The 60 limit comes into force at the next signal or the second signal after that 60 warning. now see the signal coming up just ahead so I'm just going to apply some light braking to ensure that we're down to 60 in time and then I'm just going to allow the train to coast at 60 and we're just going to coast well all of the way to uh, Gillingham now I certainly won't need to apply any more power from this point and I'm going to apply the brakes for Gillingham station as we enter the next left hand curve I'm 
passing Gillingham Depot on the left hand side. So we've got a warning there for an upcoming 60, well 35 over 60 limit, so that doesn't apply to us as that's for freight trains, the 35 limit. Now coming up on the left hand curve, which I mentioned a moment ago, so I'm going to start applying the brakes just to bring our speed down now. Here at Gillingham Station we need to stop at the S sign, which is right at the end of the platform. I've just reduced the braking momentarily, as I thought we are probably slowing down a little bit too quick. We're entering the platform at a good speed though. So I'm just trying to look out for the S sign ahead. It looks like it's right by the stairs here, just behind that post. Yep, there we are. And so it literally is right on the end of the platform. So I'm trying to bring us in just to stop in just about the right place here. Departing away from Gillingham, the speed limit here is 60 miles per hour, with around 1.4 miles to go to the next stop, which is Chatham. So now coming up on a 30 mile per hour speed warning, we can ignore that for now as that uh, speed limit's still a bit of a distance away. Uh, the main thing to bear in mind here is that as we enter this tunnel, we're going to start on a downward gradient and the speed limit at the exit to the tunnel is uh, going to be dropping to 50 miles per hour. So you want to ensure that you're not doing any faster than 50 by this tunnel exit. Putting just over 50 now, I'm just gonna cut the power back. Just applied some light braking just to ensure that we uh, didn't exceed 50 and of course we are on this downward gradient so in fact I'm going to slow us down slightly more so we just crept up to 51 there. Um, as the speed limit drops to 50 we've got 650 yards to go to that upcoming 30 limit and we've just passed the uh, 50 board now so I'm going to continue to brake lightly at this point just to bring our speed down more. I'm just in the very lightest brake application at the minute. Um, we might be slowing down slightly too quick, but I just found it's uh, quite helpful to know. In fact, uh, you can see the 30 speed post coming up. So yeah, we were slowing down just about right. So basically, once you reach that 50 mile per hour speed post, just make a minimal brake application and you should be down to 30 in time for the 30 limit. Of course, we are still on a downward gradient as we pass that 30 speed post. Um, so I've just brought us down to 28, I've now um, released the braking and I'll use the brakes to control our speed though the gradient will be levelling out as we enter the platform at Chatham Station uh, which is coming up just ahead. And here at Chatham uh, I need to stop at the 10 to 12 car stop sign uh, which is right near the end of the platform. So just as we entered the platform there, I've made a very light brake application to bring our speed off and I'm now increasing that just a little as we get closer to the end to ensure that we slow down in time. And you can see we're now coming up on the 4 to 8 car stop sign with the 10 to 12 sign right up by the signal at the end there. And we should now be stopping in just about the right place.
Departing away from Chatham, the speed limit here is still 30 miles per hour with 0.8 miles to go to the next stop at Rochester. And we are now going to be starting on a downward gradient again as we enter this tunnel here. And we're going to be going downhill pretty much all of the way to Rochester Station. Um, so as we get towards 25 miles per hour, I'm going to shut off the power to allow the train to coast. And then we're just going to use the brakes to control the speed along here um, to ensure that we don't end up breaking the speed limit. Coming up just ahead, you can see the platforms of the old Rochester station, which uh, closed a few years ago and then was moved just slightly further up the line to the new Rochester station, where we'll be stopping in a moment. So we're still on a downward gradient as we enter the platforms here at Rochester, though the gradient is levelling out in the platform itself. And here at Rochester we need to stop at the S sign at the end of the platform. I realise I've uh, forgotten to turn off some of the scenario markers there. I, I normally turn them all off, but uh, I can see... Uh, those markers there which I, I absolutely hate seeing in the game because it just doesn't look right so um, at this stop I'm going to try and see about turning them off so that we won't see any more on this journey. And we should now be stopping in just about the right place. Departing away from Rochester, the speed limit here is still 30 miles per hour, with around 0.6 miles to go to the next stop at Strood, and around 600 yards to go to an upcoming 20 mile per hour speed limit. So now coming up on Rochester Bridge, where we're crossing the River Medway, and just at the end of the bridge here is where the 20 mile per hour speed limit comes into force. Um, at this junction you can see just coming up, so we're going to be diverging to the right, whereas the Chatham Main Line continues uh, straight on towards London, Victoria. So we're now going to be going around a very sharp right-hand curve on a steep downward gradient, and uh, in addition to that, the speed limit is dropping further to 15 miles per hour on this curve. Um, so I'm just going to have to keep a close eye on the speed here to ensure that I can control it. Uh, the 15 limit comes into force at the crossover points that you can see coming up just here. Though I can't actually see a 15 mile per hour speed post for some reason. Uh, but yeah, the speed limit is now 15 and I'm going to use the brakes to control the speed. You can see the platform at Strood Station coming up just ahead. And at Strood we need to stop at the 8 to 12 car stop sign.
we are still on this downward gradient in the platform here, which is why every time I release the brakes, we start accelerating again. And so I'm just using the brakes to try and control that speed, and I'm looking out for that stop sign, which I think I can see coming up right near the end there. see the 8 to 12 car stop sign there just coming up on the left hand side so I'm making a light brake application. I was just fanning the brakes slightly there and just wait for that sign to disappear and we should now be stopping in just about the right place. All our trains and stations are no smoking areas. Please do not smoke until you have left the station premises. This includes e-cigarettes. So departing away from Strood, the speed limit here is still 15 miles per hour um, and we're still on a 0.8% downward grade so I'm allowing us to coast from 10 miles per hour up towards 15. And um, we've got something like uh, uh, six miles to go to the next stop at Gravesend. I say something like because for some reason I haven't noted the distance uh, in my notes here. So uh, I plan to uh, put that uh, actually um, as a caption in the video um, uh, when I do the final editing. So entering this tunnel here, the speed limit has gone up to 70 miles per hour and it's very difficult to work out when the rear of the train is clear to accelerate, but it is around 30 to 35 seconds after entering this tunnel. See, there's a signal just coming up ahead. I don't know if you can spot that. I can just see the green light flickering. Um, so as that green light becomes more clear, I know that we definitely should be clear to start accelerating to the new speed limit. So the speed limit's now 70 miles per hour and we'll remain at this speed pretty much all of the way to Gravesend. Accelerating nicely now up towards 70 miles per hour and then we're going to come through tunnel exit and straight into another tunnel and uh, then as we exit the second tunnel we pass Higham station. As we reach uh, 67 to 68 miles per hour, I'm now cutting the power back uh, just to ensure that we don't accelerate too quickly. And we need to go between idle and low power to try and maintain this speed. We're currently in notch one of power, which seems that we are still accelerating, but just very slowly. see the platforms at Higham Station coming up just ahead. And as we pass through Higham, we've got around four and a half miles to go to Gravesend. Seems the gradient's changed slightly here and notch one of power is holding us pretty much at 68 miles per hour, which is good. Um, if we start to accelerate now, I'll just cut the power back to idle. And if we start to decelerate, I'll just add an extra notch of power.
coming up on Hu Junction Yard. Tracks here merge back to two tracks once again as we've passed the yard. We've then got 3.2 miles to go. So what I'm looking out for along here now is a warning for an upcoming 50 mile per hour speed limit. That warning is 0.6 miles from the limit itself. And from that point, I'm just gonna allow the train to coast. reaching the warning for that upcoming 50 so I'm just cutting the power off now and I'm going to apply the brakes in a moment. Just as we're entering this left hand curve I've now made a light brake application and I'll increase the braking if necessary to ensure that we're down to 50 in time. Right, so I'm increasing the braking now as we're approaching this next signal. I think the speed limit comes into force just after this signal here um, so I might have slowed down slightly too early there. But I'm just going to allow the train to coast at this point. The um, next um, speed change is a drop in the speed limit down to 30 miles per hour. So yeah, we did slow down slightly too early. It looks like the um, speed restriction changes here. So you can see we've got the 30 warning and the 50 speed limit at the same time. So the 30 speed limit comes into force on this straight just a little bit after this signal. I think I can see the speed post coming up in the distance there. So I'm not going to brake until we pass this signal. Now if we were actually doing the full 50 mile per hour speed limit you'd want to brake probably just before that signal. So just made a light brake application and that's brought our speed down nicely. You can see the 30 mile per hour speed post coming up just here. Now here at Gravesend Station, um, we need to stop at the S sign at the end of the platform. We should now be stopping in just about the right place.
departing away from Gravesend. The speed limit here is 30 miles per hour with around 1.9 miles to go to the next stop at Ebbsfleet International where of course we join the Channel Tunnel Rail Link slash High Speed 1 route and we change to the overhead power mode. So the speed limit has just jumped up to 70 miles per hour and we can accelerate around the area of the next signal coming up just ahead. So um, as the speed limit went up to 70, we had 1.2 miles to go to an upcoming 60 mile per hour speed limit. Now we're doing just over 60 miles per hour. I'm gonna cut the power off to allow the train to coast. The 60 mile per hour speed limit comes into force at the junction. So you can see we've got a left-hand feather indicator on this signal. So we're diverging left off this route. And at that point, the speed limit is then dropping to 60 miles per hour. There's also going to be a steep downward gradient immediately after passing this junction. So I'm going to start applying the brakes for our stop at Ebbs Fleet now. So this curve does seem a little bit sharp for the speed limit. I'm not sure if it looks quite that sharp in reality or not. So here at Ebbs Fleet International, we need to stop at the S, which is at the end of the platform. Then I'm going to quickly change the power mode uh, before opening the doors, uh, just to show you what you need to do at this point. Of course, on this route, um, on the high speed section, the speed limits are measured in kilometers per hour, which is the European standard. So the speedometer in a moment actually switches from miles per hour to kilometers per hour um, to allow us to know what speed we're traveling at. Just looking out for the S sign, I can just see it now right at the end there, right by this signal. So I've just been bringing us in for a gentle stop. And we should now be stopping in just about the right place. And so just as we've stopped here very quickly, if we look over to the left hand side, uh, what I mentioned earlier, you've got DC and CTRL there. So if I click and hold CTRL for Channel Tunnel Rail Link, just keep holding that until it goes red. Now press the pan up shoes down button once. And now press it a second time. And now we're all set up on the AC power mode, uh, ready to depart out towards St Pancras International. So let's just take another look at the train and then we'll continue on our journey. Departing away from Ebbs Fleet International, the speed limit here is initially 100 km per hour, though as you can see on the TVM display that's just illuminated. We're now authorised to accelerate to 130 km per hour, which is around 80 miles per hour. And we've got around 16 miles to go to our first stop on the high speed section, which is Stratford International. And we started here on a 1.7 downward gradient, which is significantly affecting our acceleration. Um, just to point out, of course, a kilometre is smaller than a mile, so we do also appear to be accelerating even quicker than we are, just because the numbers are going up so much quicker than they were before. But even so, there's definitely uh, more acceleration um, once we're on this section under the overhead wires than there is on the third rail section of the route. So right now our speeds are entirely guided by the in-cab TVM430 signalling system 
and uh, I'm just going to control the speed based upon what that's telling me to do. So it's now jumped to 225, so we can now accelerate up to 225 kilometers per hour, uh, which is the maximum speed for this train, of course, which is 140 miles per hour. So initially we're accelerating quite quickly, but as we exit this tunnel, we're going to be on some very steep upward gradients, which will affect our acceleration. And it's going to be a little while before we're able to reach the speed limit. In fact, as you can see now, we're in full power, but we're losing speed due to the gradient that we're currently on. bridge just coming up is the Queen Elizabeth Bridge. Um, to our left it's actually a suspension bridge as it crosses the River Thames and uh, on that bridge is the M25 which is the London Orbital Motorway for anyone who's not so familiar with the area. So with the TVM430 system you're going to see these posts, these weird triangular posts that are blue and yellow, uh, they are actually the signals. So for example if the system said two started flashing and then it started flashing 200 for 200 kilometers per hour that would mean that by the next one of those posts and you can see that post coming up just now by the next one of those posts you would have to have slowed down to 200 kilometers per hour um, so what i found is quite an effective way to manage the speed along here is to aim for a target speed of 222 kilometers per hour and then if the train starts accelerating above that you can just cut the power a bit or apply some braking if necessary and of course if the train uh, decelerates below that you can then add power but i find that's a good target speed to ensure that you don't break the speed limit railway route that you can see on the right hand side there is part of the London Tilbury and South End Railway which runs out of Fenchurch Street Station. So yeah, um, of course with the new computer build I'm looking forward to making more videos in Train Sim World 2 and Train Simulator. But I've also started looking at other games on rails, you know. Um, for example, I bought the new Tram Sim yesterday, um, which currently simulates only one route and it's in uh, Vienna in Austria. But I really enjoy driving it and I was considering making maybe making some videos in other simulators as well. Um, so yeah, would any, just to ask, would anyone be interested in that at all? Um, certainly Tram Sim. I was also looking at Zeusy 3, um, which is another train simulator. The graphics aren't quite so good and all the routes are German, but uh, in terms of handling and the way you drive, it's incredibly realistic. Um, and also I'd um, like to, at some point, try and start making some route guide videos again, and possibly also a documentary just about the history of train simulation, which is something I talked about a long time ago as wanting to do, um, but it's something that's really back in my head to do now. And just to also say, I've decided to make this come back to YouTube more permanent, which is why I have this new computer build. Um, otherwise, um, I might have... have stayed away for a while shall we say but no I've decided to, to make this comeback permanent and you can expect more videos over the coming months and hopefully years as well so we've just entered London tunnel number two at the other end of this tunnel will be Stratford International Station initially entering the tunnel we had a steep downward gradient so I used the brakes to control our speed at that point 
and uh, so our speed changes as we get towards Stratford International are going to be entirely dictated by the TVM430 signalling system. As we entered this tunnel we had 6.5 miles to go to Stratford. Okay, so the TVM system is now flashing, which indicates that we're going to have a speed change soon. Um, so what I've done is, oh, well, it seems like I might have applied some slight braking there. It's really difficult to read the needles on the brake gauges in these tunnels for some reason. Um, but yeah, I shut off the power to allow the train to coast down, and now you can see it's uh, changed to 200, which indicates we need to be down to 200 by the next signal post. Just to say, if you're not down to that speed limit in time, there will be an emergency brake application, as I discovered uh, on some of the practice runs here. And uh, the speed limit's now dropping further to 160 kilometers per hour at the next post. I've just released the braking momentarily. I'm allowing the train to coast at this point. Now we need to go down to 100 miles, uh, sorry, kilometers, not miles per hour, uh, 100 kilometers per hour uh, by the time we reach the next post. So I'm braking quite hard now and hoping that I slow down in time. So one thing I found really difficult is judging these uh, braking distances in the tunnels just because it's really difficult to see what's ahead of you. Um, but we are now down to the correct speed limit in time. And we're now coming up on Stratford International Station shortly after the tunnel exit. There is a steep upward gradient as we leave the tunnel. So I'm allowing the train to naturally lose some speed and I'll apply the brakes just as we get closer to the platform here. Here at Stratford International, I want to stop at the end of the platform. So just to mention, with the uh, target speed for entering the platforms of around 30 to 35 miles per hour, um, in kilometres per hour, that's around 50 to 55 kilometres per hour. So just notice we're stopping a bit too early there. I thought the six car stop sign was actually our stopping point. But no, we did need to stop right at the end, um, just by this TVM marker that you can see just coming up. We should now be stopping in just about the right place. Departing away from Stratford International, the starting speed limit is 100 kilometers per hour with around five miles to go to the next and final stop on this journey at London St Pancras International. As we enter this tunnel here, we're back on another steep downward gradient which aids with our acceleration at this point. 
I've got to bear in mind until the TVM system says otherwise, we are stuck at 100 kilometers per hour. So I'll cut the power back for a moment and now it's jumped at 225. So the TVM has started flashing because of the progressive speed changes um, as the speed limit lowers as we get closer to St Pancras. I don't need to worry too much about that for now. Um, as you can see, it's currently still flashing, only 225, but I don't recommend going above 200 kilometers per hour, which is about 125 miles per hour in this tunnel. So with the TVM speed changes, um, you can see it's now flashing once again. Uh, we're now going to go from 200 to 160 to 100 to 80. And 80 kilometers per hour will be the final speed limit as we leave this tunnel. At this point, because the 200's flashing, I'm just gonna allow the train to coast at this point. And now let's start braking for the upcoming 160. Hopefully I'm gonna slow down quick enough. I've got the brakes on quite hard. But um, as I say, I do really struggle in these tunnels. Just, that was literally just in time. Um, that was incredible timing as far as slowing down goes. Um, so I'm now slowing down for the uh, upcoming 100 speed restriction. speed change is down to 80. I'm just going to gently slow down towards that now. We do have a steep upward gradient leaving this tunnel which does help with the braking of course. And we're now down to 80 in time. Uh, so the next speed change will be shortly after leaving the tunnel which is a drop in the speed limit down to 60 miles per hour. As you probably heard just then the AWS system has now kicked back in as we're leaving the tunnel here. So I'm just gonna allow the train to coast at this point, shut the power off, and we should slow down towards 60 kilometers per hour. Um, so there is a 60 speed limit, which comes into force um, at the next signal. So you can see the signal just coming up where the 60 limit comes into force. As we pass this signal, we've got 400 yards to go to an upcoming 40 limit. So we're now going to round a sharp left curve here with a steep downward gradient. So I'm just going to apply the brakes to bring us down towards the new 40 km per hour speed limit. And I'm going to have to keep using the brakes to control our speed as we get closer to St Pancras uh, Station. Uh, so you can see we've got a platform indicating signal there, indicating that we are cleared into platform 13 here at London St Pancras International. And just to the right of us, those tracks on the right, are the Midland Main Line, which runs from St Pancras up to places such as Nottingham, Derby and Sheffield. Gradient's a bit up and down actually as we enter the platform here, so you do still need to keep an eye on your speed as you enter the platforms. And also, um, just to uh, make a note here that as we get close to the buffer stops, you do need to remember there is a big pointy nose on the front of this train, uh, so you don't want to stop maybe as close as a flat fronted train uh, to the buffer stops, just to ensure that you don't end up uh, crumpling the nose or something and having a rather awkward chat with your manager if this was real life, um, to say the least. Um, so yeah, I'm bringing our speed down now, quite gently.
So I've just been using very light brake applications. And now if we stop just there as the buffers disappear, that should be about the right place to stop. And so here we are, arrival at London St Pancras International. I just wanted to say at this point, thank you very much for watching this video. I do hope that you enjoyed it. And if you did, then please don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, please don't forget to let me know in the comments what you think of the graphical quality. Um, now that I've managed to crank the settings right up and let me know if you think that this has been an improve or you've noticed an improvement or not. Um, if you'd like to find me for the, for the latest updates, then you can find me on Facebook. The link to my page is in the description of this video. And if you'd like to support me on Patreon, then the link to my Patreon page is also in the video description. And finally, if you're interested in photography or you're interested in maybe watching some travel vlogs and documentaries in the future, then please check out PTG Photography and PTG Travel, which are both also on Facebook. Once again, thank you for watching this video.